Decker? I think he's some purr. By clouds. My head in the clouds, not coming down. Chapter 29. What friends do? What were you thinking? Toshinori winced as Naito threw open the door to his hospital room. Hello to you too, Mirai. Aren't you at least glad I survived the fight with that monster? He devolved into a coughing fit, and Mirai frowned at him. He looked conflicted for a long moment before he sighed and sat down in the chair beside the bed. Here. Mirai handed him a handkerchief. Don't hurt yourself. Toshinori took the handkerchief and gave Mirai a weak smile. We did it though, Mirai. We changed the future. I didn't die by the hand of a monster like you foresaw. Mirai sighed. We don't know that, Toshinori. You know as well as I do that surroundings get more and more fuzzy the further into the future I look, so there's no guarantee this Nomu was the future I saw at your death. Toshinori coughed again. Can't you just take a moment to be happy I'm alive? Nirai raised an eyebrow at him. You've been asleep for the most of the past 24 hours. How do you know I haven't already taken that moment and moved on? Toshinori laughed, but stopped when he realized how badly his ribs hurt. Good point. I assume you're here to chew me out for being reckless. If so, you're a little late. Recovery girl already gave me an earful. He rubbed the back of his head, still feeling the phantom pain from her cane. And a head full. Mirai glared at him. You deserved it. You should have been there, Toshinari. The students were counting on you and you failed them because you were late. Toshinari sighed. I know, I should have prioritized my teaching rather than my heroics, but... He groaned. How was I supposed to just walk by when people needed my help? My knowing your limits, Nirai said. You got lucky with All for One in that you've basically had enough power to do whatever you put your mind to your entire career, but most people aren't that lucky. Most of us have to know our limits and do what we can within them, but that doesn't make us any less. Toshinori frowned. You're talking about young Midoriya, aren't you? I don't understand it, Toshinori. You were quirkless. You know firsthand how difficult that is, and yet you still try to get him to drop out of the hero course. Toshinori grimaced. We told you about that, huh? Nirai huffed. Why wouldn't he? He was pretty angry, Toshinori. And from what I've heard from Eraser, this wasn't even the first time you've tried to crush his dream. I'm not sure if he'll ever forgive you. I don't even know if I can forgive you. Toshinori frowned in confusion. What? Why wouldn't you be able to forgive me? Are you close to young Midori or something? Mirai raised his eyebrows. Midoriya is Deku the analyst who's been helping the Hero Underground for the last year or so. I'm surprised you didn't know that. It's not like we try to hide his identity or anything. Eraser says that even the students know at this point. Were you even paying attention, Toshinori? Young Midoriya is that Deku? I thought he had an analysis quirk, Toshinori said in shock. Of course you did, Mirai muttered. How many Dekus do you think existed, Toshinori? Useless isn't a very common code name. I just thought it was two of them. I didn't think. Toshinori muttered. There's just one Deku, Toshinori. Mirai glared at him. So I'm sure you can understand why I'm angry with you right now. I've grown close to Deku and can vouch for his skill, but from what I've been told, you've been against him from the very beginning. I was just trying to protect him. By what? Mirai asked. By treating him like he's less than other students. No! I wanted to protect him by keeping him alive. 
You've never been quirkless before, Mirai. You don't know what it's like. And now I'm questioning whether you do, Mirai said, meeting Toshinori's eye. Nana gave you that quirk decades ago, Toshinori. So how much do you really remember about being quirkless? Toshinori held his gaze without flinching. Enough to remember that I would never been able to be a hero if she hadn't. So that's what this is about, then. Midai glared at him. You think there is no way Deku is capable of being a quirkless hero just because you weren't? Think, Toshinori. Think of how you would have felt if people back then told you there was no way you could be a hero just because you were quirkless. You seem to be forgetting that people did tell me that, Toshinori said. Multiple times, in fact. For years. I never could have achieved my dreams of being a symbol of peace if I hadn't met Nana when I did. And you're right. I did get lucky. But that doesn't change the fact that someone without a quirk can never stand against someone with superpowers. I'll admit I did not realize the extent of what young Midoriya was capable of, but I was just trying to- Mirai held up a hand. It doesn't matter what you were trying to do, Toshinori. In the end, you made him feel as if he were less than the other students. Mirai glared at him. The exact opposite of what a good teacher is supposed to do. I'm disappointed in you, Toshinori. Toshinori felt like he'd gotten a punch in the gut. What was he supposed to say to that? He just thought that then young Midoriya had survived the attack, hadn't he? He'd even been facing down the villains when Toshinori had arrived. The silence dragged on to the point where it was beyond awkward, but he still didn't know what he was supposed to say. He didn't want to lose his friend again. Not when Mirai had just barely started speaking to him again, but what was he supposed to do? After a few minutes, Mirai stood. I think you're going to have to accept that Deku is going to be the quirkless hero you weren't capable of being. He might never be a symbol of peace like you are, and he'll have to know his limits like you seem to be incapable of doing, but he is going to be a hero. And you're just going to have to deal with that. He sighed and turned back to Toshinori, with his hand on the doorknob. Just... Promise me you'll give him a chance, okay? If not for his own sake, for the sake of that quirkless boy you once were. The one everyone told he couldn't be a hero. Because I think you'll find you two are much more similar than you realize. Toshinori stared at Mirai for a long moment, before nodding hesitantly. Mirai gave a small smile and walked out the door, leaving Toshinori to sink back into his bed in exhaustion. He still didn't think that young Midoriya would survive all three years in the hero course, but he supposed he could give the young boy a chance, if only for his friend's sake. He just hoped the boy would prove him wrong. Chapter 30 Back at School Izuku laughed when he saw Aizawa walk into the classroom, literally mummy-wrapped from head to toe. Yeah, he'd seen him in the hospital, but that had looked like he belonged. Here, he seemed like he was pretending he was fine. He was even wearing his hero gear like usual, but... At the same time, he looked like he was cosplaying as an ancient Egyptian. Izuku grabbed his phone and snapped a picture, quickly sending it to Joke, who sent back an unintelligible string of emojis. <clears throat> Izuku smiled sheepishly at Aizawa, who was glaring at him. Don't ask how Izuku knew he was glaring at him considering Aizawa's eyes were almost completely covered in bandages, and there was no way anyone would be able to make out any facial expressions underneath all those, but Izuku could just feel it. Kaminori and Saru had started giggling, and Izuku's grin just got wider, overshooting Innocent and Lenning squarely in shit-eating territory. Aizawa stared at him for another long moment before he seemingly gave up, 
and sighed. The UA Sports Festival is in two weeks. This is your chance to impress pros, which will lead to internships and opportunities in the future. So don't mess it up. Excuse me, Aizawa-sensei. Ida raised his hand high. Is it really wise to hold the sports festival right after an attack? It wasn't my decision, Aizawa said dully. I think it's irrational, but the school has decided we need to show we're not intimidated by the actions of these villains, so it's happening. Your responsibility is to be ready. Yes, sir. By the time lunch came around, everyone was a lot more excited than fearful. Izuku smiled as he saw his classmates' determination to show off their quirks to the pros, even if they all took very different approaches. Udadaka especially was more determined than Izuku had ever seen her. For his part, Izuku wasn't concerned about being scouted by pros. He was going underground, and most of the pros he would work with for internships already knew who he was so the sports festival wouldn't make a huge difference for him professionally like it would for his classmates. What Izuku was worried about was proving that a quirkless kid like him could stand on equal footing as the kids with powerful quirks. Many people were still under the impression that Deku had an analysis quirk, and there were bound to be more heroes like All Might who insisted on believing that quirkless had no place being heroes, so it was important that Izuku prove them all wrong. So, the major question was whether he should apply to bring some support gear. Would going into it with his gear even the playing field, or would it be a red flag that people would take as proof that Quirkless really were the lesser? Izuku debated each side as he made his way to Nezu's office for his personal lesson, which was a whole other moral dilemma. The more he and Nezu dived into his old middle school, the more Izuku realized he wasn't the only victim of their neglect. Could he really justify destroying them? Was there a better way to make sure they didn't hurt anyone else, or was Nezu's way the most effective course of action? What was the right thing to do here? The door opened on its own as Izuku raised his hand to knock, and he smiled as he walked in to find Nezu already sitting at his desk, pouring tea. Hello, Midoriya. How are you today? Is your arm recovering well from Shigaraki's attack? Izuku nodded and lifted his sleeve so Nezu could see the bandages still covering his forearm. Recovery Girl wants me to keep it covered for the next week or so, but it's already scarred over, so it's mostly just a precaution. Nezu nodded. Good. I am happy to hear that. I'm so sorry that you and your classmates had to go through that. Warp quirks are always tricky in terms of tightening security. Izuku nodded. Especially unregistered warp quirks. Nezu tilted his head. What? Oh, um, I was just looking into the quirk records. Sagachi gave me access, don't worry. To see if I could track down the leaders of the League based on their quirks, but I couldn't find anything at all on Kuragiri's. Izuku took a sip of tea and frowned. It's like the quirk itself shouldn't exist. I still need to think about what quirks could realistically combine to create Warpgate, though, before I really say anything else. Maybe his parents are in the records, even if he's not. Nezu nodded, smiling. Very good. I'm sure that will be a very interesting endeavor. Did you find anything else interesting? Izuku was silent for a moment. Did Nezu know about All Might's quirk? Because All Might and All for One were definitely linked, or they would be if Izuku could prove his theory that All for One either had an immortality quirk or was an inheritable quirk like All Might's. Maybe he could ask Sakauchi to let him use the department's facial recognition software to disprove the immortality theory, but even if All Might was teaching at UA and using it to mentor Tagata, there was no guarantee that Nezu knew that, and if not, Izuku didn't want to give him any hints, but... He couldn't just keep something this big to himself. Well, um, you know how Shigaraki offered- Offered you a quirk? Nezu finished. Izuku nodded hesitantly. Um, well, 
I was thinking about what he said, that his sensei could give and take quirks. It's theoretically possible if that was his quirk, and that would make this sensei the true leader of the League, not Shigaraki, which is even more likely due to Shigaraki's temperament. I was beginning to suspect as much, Nezu said. This sensei must be powerful indeed if he was able to convince so many to follow such a volatile man-child such as Shigaraki. Exactly. So far it's actually been easier to find info on who sensei might be than it is to find info on Shigaraki and Kurigiri, but it's also almost impossible to separate the truth from the legends. Well, I have found that legends are often based on truth. Nezu leaned forward, not bothering to hide his interest. So... What have you found? Well, the story goes back when Quarks first appeared. There was a man who went by the name All for One who had Sensei's Quark. I think that part's true, at least. I could find a lot of sources before he accumulated enough support to disappear into the shadows. I'm still not sure how exactly Sensei connects to that original All for One, but I'm fairly certain there's a connection. The Quarks are too big of a coincidence for it to be anything else. Nezu stared at him, seriously. If so, that would make him a very powerful villain. I'm concerned that you've stumbled across a very dangerous piece of information, Midoriya. Perhaps it would be wisest if you didn't look into it further. With all due respect, Nezu, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference whether I know about All for One or not. I've obviously already caught his attention and made an enemy out of Shigaraki, so... It's not like I'm going to be in any more danger just because I know too much. Actually, my best bet is probably to know as much as I possibly can about my enemy before I have to face him. Izuku smiled. I'm living proof that knowledge is power. That you are. Well, I must ask that you keep me informed of what you find, because this is dangerous information, but I will trust your judgment for now. Is that agreeable? Izuku nodded and Nezu responded by clapping his hands together. Perfect. Well, in that case, perhaps we should continue our lessons where we left off before this unfortunate attack. Now, where were we? We were talking about safety rhetorics, Izuku said. That many times, popular villains will argue that their wrong actions are actually necessary to keep people safe. Like how an abuse of a boyfriend will defend his jealousy by saying he doesn't want his significant other to get hurt by other men. Good example. Nezu grinned. Now, how do you think your old school used this rhetoric to their advantage? Izuku thought for a moment. Well, that's kind of difficult because they never really tried saying they were protecting me, but... I guess from their perspective, they probably thought they were protecting the kids with quirks. The ones with strong quirks, especially. Can you expound on that a bit more? Well... Izuku pinched his bottom lip as he sorted through his thoughts. If they had punished Katsuki for his treatment of me like they were supposed to, it probably would have gone on his record and he wouldn't be able to get into UA. If they'd been called out on it, they probably would have said they were protecting Katsuki's future and prioritizing the kids with the most potential. Is that right? Nezu took a sip of tea. Well, it is morally reprehensible, but that is a good example of how people often try to use protection as a tool to justify their own wrongdoings. Good work. Now, how do you think we could combat this? We'd have to find ways to poke holes in their logic, Izuku said. If we could show they're not protecting anyone, then their entire argument would fall apart. Nezu nodded. Good. Now practice doing that with the argument you just put forth on your old school's behalf that they were protecting Bakugo. My first thought would be that I, as a quirkless person, deserve protection too, Izuku began. But... I'm not sure that would be the best way to do it. I am inclined to agree with you, but can you explain your reasons? People don't let go of their prejudices easily, and if society didn't have a prejudice, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. While there will be some people that would agree that my well-being is just as important as Kartsky's, there will probably be even more that will agree with my school. 
even if they shouldn't say so out loud. Nezu nodded. So? So, we need to make the strength of their argument into its weakness. Izuku smiled. Their main argument is that they were protecting Katsuki, so what if we could prove that they were doing the exact opposite and make it about their quirk students, not the quirkless ones? We could point out what we've already realized, that their protection of him was actually harmful because it enabled harmful behaviors and anger issues that are going to have to be resolved now, rather than being resolved when they first appeared back in elementary school. They put Katsuki behind socially and emotionally, so they didn't have his best interest at heart. If we spin it right, we could even say that they were simply using these strong kids as tools to abuse children, which would cause public outrage. Nezu smiled proudly. Very good, Midoriya. I dare say you're getting the hang of this. Have you given any thought to if you'd like to go public with this information? Izuku nodded. I've thought about it a lot, actually, and I think taking them down is the right decision. They've hurt a lot of people, not just me, and will continue hurting people if they're allowed to, so it's my responsibility as a future hero to make sure they stop, right? Very good. Then, for your next assignment, I would like you to create a post that just barely scratches the surface of the issues we've discovered. It's much better to go slowly with these kinds of things, after all, so the effects are more permanent. Then research which would be the best forums and times to post such a thing anonymously, and then when we discuss it next week, I'll let you know how you did and if there's a way to do it better. Does that sound agreeable? Izuku nodded eagerly. Very well. Nezu smiled and stood, walking Izuku to the door. Good work today, Midoriya. You had better get going to heroics. You may be ahead of many of your peers, but it is important that you prepare well for the sports festival. Yes, sir.